John Bracewell, uh, a New Zealander, a proud New Zealander. Not a bad winter for you, both on the on the rugby field and the cricket field. Well, in particular on the um, on the rugby field. I mean, it's uh, 24 years between drinks is uh, is a long time, and I was very thirsty, as as were a lot of New Zealanders. Um, but I, I'm sure we celebrated well um, all around the world. Uh, and much relieved sitting in this country watching it, I can assure you. <laughs> uh, a victory as well for New Zealand in Hobart uh, against Australia, where your nephew uh, was the star performer. Yeah, equally long distance between drinks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I mean, he bowled well. Um, he's, he's obviously a pretty good cricketer um, and held his nerve under, under pretty extreme pressure, really. Uh, showed that uh, he has the capabilities of, uh, and the game sense to be able to win games for New Zealand. The more Bracewells coming through the New Zealand system? There is actually. Um, there's, uh, I've got another brother who has a, uh, a son playing for Otago who um, actually played a couple of games for our second 11 uh, about three years ago. Um, and he's a pretty good cricketer as well. He's, he's, he's a left hand uh, opening bat uh, and gives a bit of a whack. You've got this link with New Zealand, obviously here at Gloucestershire, um, and more players coming in this this summer. Yeah, we have got the return of Kane Williamson. I mean, it's it's more about economics and, and opportunity, and when you're working on a a low budget and in an overseas case, no budget at all, um, we had to be reasonably canny about how how we recruited if we could recruit at all. So we got in touch with New Zealand cricket, and um, I talked to John Buchanan and John Wright about the advantages of, of the younger players coming over here and gaining experience. Um, they saw the experience uh, and the gains that they made through Martin Guptill, who was at Derbyshire, uh, and, and Kane here, and, and the benefits that is, is producing uh, through gaining that experience of playing in, in, in what is a pretty unique competition in, in, in England. It's one that's not overcoached. Um, and, and you gain your experience through actually playing the game, um, whereas other countries don't necessarily get that opportunity. So uh, they see the advantage as, as, as much as, as we do. We're taking advantage of the fact that we've got no budget and uh, they're helping us out. And we've also got a you know, private little sponsor on the side that uh, is assisting us as, as well. You, you've seen the, the headlines throughout the, the winter of uh, many counties, not all, but many announcing large profits uh, and yet you keep mentioning here that uh, there's no budget at all. That obviously to do with the ground redevelopment, if it eventually happens. How difficult has it been for you this winter? Well, it's, it's, it's tough, there's no, there's no doubt about it, but you've got to be smart with the challenge. I mean, it's, it's a different challenge. Um, uh, and, and to a certain extent, for a guy who's you know, worked at, at, at the top end with, with international teams and things like that, coming down and developing a young group is probably the next great challenge for me. Um, uh, to be able to take an academy through to, and, and that's basically what we're doing. We're taking an academy and working on whether an academy system does work by actually giving them the opportunity to play first class cricket and see if they actually develop. Um, and a lot of sides, if, if you look around, their academies never go on to play first class cricket. They're just academies. Um, so what's the point? So the recession or whatever you want to call it, has created an opportunity, not necessarily a problem. Almost like the Busby Babes back all those years ago you could be. Well, it gives you that sort of excitement, I'm, and, I'm, and, and it must have given them that excitement, um, probably with trepidation at the start, saying, so, you know, what the heck are we doing? But you've got to take that step, and uh, my hope is that we can retain our players when, when we redevelop the ground, rather than abandon the project and, and go and buy players. And the hope for this season, with such a, a, a large amount of youngsters in the squad, that you get, you get the feeling if you get a decent start, their enthusiasm and uh, their exuberance will carry you through. Yeah, and we have had no um, reason to believe that we won't get a decent start, given the, the, the spring that we've had. I mean, we, we were cooked last week, ready to go. Um, so we've sort of had to rock, wrap them in ice a bit, which we're going to get. Uh, sent by the gods anyway um, but you know the, we've had just such a good um, lead up to the season uh, our wickets here have been really good um, the matches that we've played away have been outstanding and, and our guys are ready to go it's you know with 17 men we're just wrapping them nice because we don't want anybody injured and you've got to wait a while because of the ground redevelopments the proposed ones you're not playing at home until well th three or four games in yeah and it, it can give us an advantage but uh, in that we play on the, you know, basically the eastern side where, you know, traditionally at this time of the year it's a little bit finer. So 
we should get our games in. Um, uh, and uh, it's a tough start for us because they, of all the you know, three, four teams probably think that they belong in the first division, we face three of them in the first month.